Good day, Grade Tens. We're going to carry on looking at uh, use. We can carry on doing revision for our June exam by looking at some typical exam questions. And we're looking at paper one, part two. It says, a positively charged perspex rod is bought, brought near a polystyrene ball. Okay, so here's your polystyrene ball and there is your positively charged perspex rod. Okay, the ball is not initially charged. Initially, it is neutral. The ball is attracted to the rod, okay, and then it touches the rod, and immediately after it touches it, it repels, okay. It says, first of all, state the principle of conservation of charge. Now, grade 10, you need to go learn all your definitions, but basically the conservation of charge says the charge cannot be created nor destroyed. It can merely be moved from one place to another, transferred from one place to another. Now it says, make use of sketch number two. So we're looking at sketch number two. It says, sketch the charge distribution on the ball as well as the rod, if any, and explain how the neutral ball is attracted to the charge rod. Okay, so we know that the charge rod, okay, is positive the whole way through. Positive, 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 positive. Okay. The ball started off being totally neutral, which meant that it had equal positive and negative charge distribution. Okay. Equal positive and negative charge distribution because it is neutral. However, as the positive rod is brought closer to it, what happens? The negative charges are attracted to this side. And what is left is with what looks like the positive charges have moved to the right. But in fact, it hasn't. It's just all the negative charges have moved to the left, which is why there is this attraction. Okay, now this says explain why the ball is repelled as it touches the rod as shown in sketch number three and you do not need to draw in a diagram. Well, what happens is as they touch, when they touch, as this rod comes into contact with it, what happens? The negative charges, because it's always the negative charges they move, they hop on to the rod. Okay, so they move onto the rod. So now what happens is this thing here has lost some of its negative charge. Therefore, it has become positive. This, even though it's gained a little bit of negative, is still positive and therefore they are going to repel. Okay, right, that's quite a nice question. Let's see what else we got. It says, similar type of question, a test is conducted to check the nature of the charges on rods A and B. It is noticed that rod A could attract both negatively and positively charged balls, as shown in figure 1, but rod B attracted a positively charged ball, but repelled a negatively charged ball, as shown in diagram 2. Using the de description in diagram 1, determine whether rod A is positive or negative or neutral, and identify the charge on rod B. Okay, so let's do rod B first because it's pretty easy. If it's repelling the negative ball and attracting a positive ball, it's obvious that the charge on rod B is negative. So it is negative. Right, but now let's look at rod A. It says that it attracts both positive and negative polystyrene balls. In that case, this has to be in neutral because what is happening is that if this polystyrene ball is positive, the electrons, the negative charges are being attracted to the polystyrene ball, okay, and therefore it will be charged towards it. And if if what happens here is if this is negative and still showing attraction, why? Because these negatives basically repel the negative charges on the rod and leave very positive charges on the end that's near the ball. So the correct answer is for diagram one that rod A is neutral because it attracts both positive and negative polystyrene balls, whereas charge B is obviously negative since it attracts a positively charged ball but repels a negatively charged ball. Right, now let's look at the next question. It says, the following diagram shows a bar magnet AB. The north pole of this magnet is at A, so that's north and this is south. Now it is cut in half and they say, 
what is the polarity of C and a D and a B? Right, so this is interesting and in fact I actually did the experiment many years ago is I actually cut a magnet up to check that this is right but what happens is what you need to realize is that this big magnet is made up of a whole bunch of little magnets that are all aligned the same way. So if we cut it, this is still going to be north and this is still going to be south and that is north and that is south. Okay, because they are still aligned. You can think of it almost as like mini, it's actually not quite the same, but it's mini magnets where this is north and south and north and south and north and south. And it's got to do with the way the atoms are aligned or the particles are actually aligned in this piece of metal. So the pillar at C is going to be south, at D is going to be north, and at B is still going to be south. Now it says two bar magnets are kept within north poles facing each other as shown in the diagram. It says sketch the magnetic field between the magnets. So obviously these are repelling each other, so I'm going to draw it over here. So we've got one block which is north and another block which is north and what is happening is they are repelling each other okay so the magnetic fields are basically not touching they are going against each other but they're going from north to south but they just want it between the magnets okay finally it says an aurora is a natural light display in the sky. Latin word for aurora means sunrise or the Roman goddess of dawn. Aurora is common in Arctic and Antarctic regions. It says explain how auroras are formed. Now this is kind of an extension question so I'm going to explain it to you. Basically what happens, auroras are formed and you guys should have learned about this somewhere along the line. Auroras are formed when basically the particles in the air are not attacked, they come into contact with the electromagnetic electromagnetic radiation from the sun. The electromagnetic radiation from the sun. So basically what happens is the electromagnetic radiation from the sun interferes with the magnetic field around the earth and when that happens the light gets distorted and auroras are formed okay and that grade 10 is part two of our journey exam re um, revision please note that this is all for paper one if you want to prepare for paper two you need to look at next week's exam papers we will carry on with this paper revision in the next couple of lessons have a great day